and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we have on the channel today? Today we have an Amiga 600 board from Mr. Paul. He writes me a note and he says, Hey Chris, uh, here's my 600 board. Sorry, I'm adjusting myself. When I purchased it, it had some cap leakage, plugged it in, it worked for a day, then a black screen. Great. No initial reset, I thought okay, leakage around the caps. Sent it off to Retro Rewind in Canada and Frank indicated the leakage got into some of the chips. Please don't be the video encoder. It worked great for a week, then has a yellow tint that would go in and out, sometimes for minutes, sometimes for hours. Now it just stays tinted permanently. I checked the RGB colors with D-Paint and there is no blue. This issue only arises when using RGB. The composite video seems fine. When I got it back from Retro Rewind, it worked fine through the RGB port and the Amiga kit adapter. That's like this one. I'm going to be using the GBS uh, 8200 and the composite video. But I bought a 4X buffered one from Alex and it made no difference. I understand you're not doing major repairs because of the excessive cost on chips, but if possible, there are no techs out there offering repair services for these things anymore. Thank you, Paul. This isn't the biggest bag over the head. So let's take a peek. It is currently 6.47 p.m. I just ate some spaghetti. Didn't spill any on my shirt this time. Let me turn some solar inverter on here. Let's put this on. We're going to put this on composite first, okay? Composite video. We're going to use composite. So he says this works composite. Turning it on. Two hours later. Nothing. Let's take this out. Let's go into VGA. I need to see what's going on. Black screen is right. All right, this is a GBS 82. It should say no signal on the screen, okay. You can't see that, no signal. All right, let's see what happens on this. Energize. There we go. Oh. Did you see that? Look. It came on and went, boo. That's like, I don't know. That could be one of many things. Here we go again. Energize. We have power. There's the screen. Watch. Boo! Okay, so we have a non-working 600 with a black screen. The exact thing I said I didn't want to get into. God damn it! <sighs> Here's your lesson in Amiga 600 composite component video. And these little can things. They're called low-pass band filters and they go into this mofo right here and they take some science shoot it through this Sony CXA1145 and it shoots RGB out either through the RF modulator the composite video or the RGB port there are a series of ferrite beads resistors one ceramic capacitor on the top bender over and you got the same thing on the bottom there's a couple resistors we have to check to see if they're getting power because if we're not getting power you're not getting video we're not getting video on composite that's these cans that's also the Sony chip if this chip doesn't get power there is three of these things right here these are little transistors there's red green and blue or is it green red blue or is it red blue green these three oops you can't see that this one this one and this one they should have five volts. They look like that. Those little triangle things. Boy, it's hard to hold something in front of a camera and try to point to something. Unlike the 1200, it doesn't have the video chip AMD thing. Not on this. That's only for AGA. This one, I don't know. They have it. This one also has a 4.43619 oscillator crystal on it and a missing trimmer cap because it's not needed. So. I'm going to go ahead and spend the time because I was asked to take a look at this. I don't think it's a Denise because it's showing a signal and it is fading. I highly suspect it's either a capacitor, a resistor, or the Sony CXA1145 video encoder. Because that takes four analog signals of each color, red, green, 
blue, shoots them over to that thing where it does some science and outputs it on some different pins for whatever video type you have. I could check each signal physically on the port, figuring out which one is which by looking at my schematics and putting a oscilloscope probe on that. We're going to get into all that, and here we are. <laughs> Said to be working, and apparently works, but maybe something happened in shipping. She was packed really well. It was super packed, everything was dry, no wetness, it came perfectly fine. Uh, There's a couple bent pins on one of the IDEs just from removing it a little sideways. I'll fix that. But this board just came back from Canada and it looks incredibly clean. I could test this and verify this by hooking up a drive to it, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use, we're gonna knock everything on the floor it will actually tell me if the external floppy is working. And why won't this go back? Yeah, it booted Amiga test kit. So, with Amiga test kit loaded, I do see a black border screen though. Just no colors. I don't know if you can see that. But I see, and I'm supposed to be at Lowe's right now buying a filter. I do see something. Okay something. Let's try the composite video here. I was told that worked. Input composite. Composite has nothing. No signal on composite at all. Membership in the Jelly of the Month Club. I hear the click of the floppy. I saw the dude of the dude. The, the ball of the fade. We need 5 volts for the video encoder to work. Pin 11, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we have 2.43 volts. So, all right, let's check those transistors. Transistor number 1, 5 volt. Transistor number 2, 4.99. Transistor number 3, 4.99. I'll even give 212 a bump, 456. Good Christmas. It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. All around the video encoder chip, I need 5 volts. And I have 1.2, 2.3, and power to the DAC needs 3.3 minimum. And we have 2.44. Well, I think I know why it's not working. It's your power supply. Lick a dog, it's not my power supply. I have 11 power supplies. This is putting out sufficient power supply. It's brand new. The dude in Poland. Electroware or whatever he's called. I can test my power supply again, because why not? 12.97, you see that? I don't know if you can or not. 5 volt rail is, oops, this one. 5, oops. 501. The Amiga is working except the display is not because the Sony chip is not getting power. Is that the transistor? Possibly. Since the capacitor that charges the transistor that gives the power to the Sony chip doesn't have current, that could be an issue too. I'm going to regroup and come up with a new plan. I just ate a whole bowl of spaghetti and I have to run to Lowe's to get an air filter and a new condensation pump because mine will not turn off after the flood and it's going to burn up. Hey, welcome back to day two on this Amiga 600. So I was looking around at the video out, I uh, found R251 4.7 kilo ohm, uh, was just going right to ground so I replaced it. No change. Um, that is one of the RGB components. They are all part of the uh, RGB, so that is E258, 260. I don't think this is the problem. I'm checking the capacitors, the little boogers like these, and the resistors. That was not it. So as a hunch, I reflowed the original CXA1145 video encoder and watch. It was going poof before. 
So I reflowed the RGB, which is the 2, 3, and 4 pins. Watch. It's not perfect. But you can actually hold and see it now. Okay? I want to reflow the rest of them real quick. Now if the whole chip reflowed, let's take a peek at what happens. Let's see. Do I get a, do I get, is it better? Or is it just shit? There's our low high and no change. At least I'm seeing something now and I can see it. Before it was black. With this running, I want to see if I get a composite signal. Which is also plugged in. No signal from your source. So, since I just touched on that 1145, I'm actually able to see a ROM screen now. It's not the 555 timer and the 231 cap, that little cap that low highs and resets the 555 timer over here. It's not that because we're running this video weirdness. The owner told me it works fine on composite. Leakage got into some of the chips. It would go yellow sometimes for minutes or hours. Now it just stays tinted permanently. RGB colors and D-paint and there's no blue. So apparently it was booting and you were able to test it. So, it's like red, green, blue or blue, red, green or I think it's red, green and blue. Those three. And then your line for 11 is here for your voltage and the last one's 12. The last one's 12 volts. So let's see what happens now. No, same thing. At least it's holding though. So, is it the 1145? I don't know. I'm waiting on parts. Anyway, there's four resistors right here. I just reflowed them and I reflowed the three transistors, the little three point guys. Watch this. That's the GBS. Don't worry about that. I'm holding a whiter color. Is it the same or am I just looking at it? Let me turn the GBS off and back on. That's the Dell also. That reboots this little turd. I don't think it really made a difference. CXA1145 encoder R231A, 231B, 231C. Red, green, blue. There's a 75 ohm R234A, B, C. I just wonder if there's separation in this board. Let's see if I push on it and anything happens. Look, I push on this, there's white. Squeeze this. Look at that. White and red. I wonder if I just have a look. I'm squeezing. Bright. Not bright. Bright. Not bright. I mean the encoder's working. The video chip is working. It's just dull. Superheat on the encoder, watch. Red. Green. Blue. Blue. That's heat. Red. Green. Blue. That's it right there. That's it, you bastard. Okay. it. Alright. Yeah, it's not holding. It's better. It's better. I can read Kickstart now. It only works when I apply heat to it. That's why it was working for him and then it wasn't. But composite should still be working. I should still have composite. It's plugged in. There's no composite signal. And that is that encoder and those stupid cans. Hey, welcome back. It's Chris. Well, duh. This crusty acid ain't up underneath. So Mr. Frank was correct. It was all jacked up underneath of there. I mean, acid galore. Could have been a James Bond uh, girl. So I snipped her legs off. CXA 1145M. In the trash. And in her place, I cleaned the pads. There are some exposed coppers in there. That flux bath of 
It looks shiny, but yeah. Two hours later. And just like that, we got a new one on. Well, I don't know about new, but a new old stock one. Magic likes. Let me clean up and we're gonna test this thing and see if it works. I'm gonna pop in my 321 ROM of my own and we'll take a peek. Does it work or not? Let's, uh, let's see here. I might have to use the Amiga Kit adapter because when I was cleaning up this mess, like I said, knocked it on the floor and we'll be uh, good to go. All right, let's see. Energize. Should get a ROM screen now. Yay! It's a little too blue because I said I knocked my GBS on the floor. So, I'm going to turn this off. At least the color's bright. When I put heat on that pad, it came back to life. That's why I'm like, well, I can't keep heating it. So let's just go in non-GBS. Let me unplug this thing and just get it out of the way. I'll have to take this apart and see if I ripped a cable or anything's possible. So we're going to go in with this. We'll use the Amiga Kit adapter. Gives us a VGA signal. The Dell U2410F, this monitor, will do 15 kilohertz. So this should be colored normal now. What do we see? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes! 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 That's a good feeling when you get these things fixed, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I bet you could use a cool one, huh? Now you're talking. So it's my ROM in here, but we'll put the original ROM back in before you ship her out. So, with that endeavor, whew, another Amiga has been saved. This time a 600 with some weird fading video. CXA 1145M video encoder. But this looks wonderful. Nice and crisp. Purple, red, white, blue. The tan disk driver-ish disk drive. And it looks great. So, that is wonderful. The rest of the Amiga functions fine. So we're going to get this wrapped up and sent back out to the owner, who, by the time this video comes out, should be enjoying it again. So that's all I got for now. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.